Greetings, my name is Ed Brantmar. I'm Assistant Director for Scholarship Programs in the Center for Faculty Innovation and also Associate Professor of Learning Technology and Leadership Education in the College of Education at James Madison University. I am the GMU Faculty Campus Fulbright Representative and I've uh, been in that position since I've been here, which has been a number of years uh, now, over six years. With that said, I want to um, talk to you today about the Fulbright program and the Fulbright program being a program or an opportunity that's a risk worth taking. Um, I'll be upfront and honest with you. It is not easy to get a Fulbright. It is not easy after you get a Fulbright to prepare yourself to leave and go overseas, uh, perhaps you and your family. It is not um, necessarily easy in country when you're dealing with multiple languages, multiple cultures, a different um, academic system altogether, different students, etc. And so if you're looking for an easy program, uh, this isn't the route for you. If you're looking for a challenge and an opportunity, if you're looking for something that will stretch you and what you know to be true and what you know to, to work uh, in your everyday context, then it is a program for you because international engagement uh, will stretch you and hopefully will change you for the better. So at James Madison University, there is a collaboration among several offices to make the Fulbright program happen. Center for Global Engagement, um, Office of Access and Inclusion, Office of Research and Scholarship, and the Center for Faculty Innovation. So we sit down typically each summer or fall and develop a plan of programs for Fulbright, these different offices and centers. And in doing so, um, we uh, want to keep in the minds of faculty, hey, this program exists, it's an opportunity. It also exists for um, academic administrators. There are different types of programs. What is it? Here's what we do at JMU, et cetera. Our role in the Center for Faculty Innovation is to do the coaching of the Fulbright program. So what we've been doing, uh, particularly for the last um, six and a half years, is uh, fielding individual consultations and talking with people about their Fulbright prospects, about how to navigate that within their department and their college and the university, and also coaching them specifically on their project statements, which is one of the most important parts when you decide to apply for a Fulbright. What project are you doing and why is it you that should be doing that project in that context and why is that important? So making the case for uh, why you should get a Fulbright. If you look at the Fulbright program in and of itself, it's supposed to increase mutual understanding between the people of the, of the United States and people of other countries. Uh, William J. Fulbright developed the program uh, in order to create mutual understanding. So that's really important. It's an exchange program. And people ask, well, how many Fulbright programs are there? One could say, well, there's only one. No, there are many. How many different countries does it go to? 120, 130 uh, uh, student Fulbright campus representative came to campus a couple years ago and said there are more than 120 Fulbright programs because it's done differently in each country. Some countries have a Fulbright commission, some countries run the program through their embassies, so that matters. It's very diverse in the way that the program is administered. Um, however, the core of it is to increase mutual understanding between people and institutions um, from other countries. Um, and it indeed does that. So I wanna share some sample GMU faculty Fulbright alum. If we have a whole range of people and a whole great history of people receiving Fulbrights at GMU. We have Matt Lee in psychology, Croatia, Erica metzer sohn from nursing, Anthony Tongan from mathematics, Teresa Harris, um, for, uh, she went to South Africa, uh, College of Education. Communication Sciences and Disorders Professor Lincoln Gray, Shane O'Hara from Dance, which is College of Visual Performing Arts, Maureen Shanahan, Art History, Mace Bentley, ISAT, Sang Yoon, two-time Fulbrighter, went to South Korea, Ken Rutherford, Professor of Political Science, went to Jordan back in the day, and myself, um, Ed Brandmeyer, I was a Fulbright Scholar in India in 2009, and I got a teaching uh, teaching award, um, so it was a lecturing scholarship where I did both teaching and research in India at the Malavia Center for Peace Research at Madaras Hindu University. And if you look deeply in back of me on the wall right there, you'll see some of the photographs from that wonderful experience in India. And uh, now I serve as a JMU faculty Fulbright campus representative and also a coach. Uh, we've we're in the process of developing a series of, uh, of 
a uh, network of coaches, typically past Fulbrighters, who, who can give you guidance about your prospects and the process of the Fulbright, how to apply and uh, how to think through how to best sell your project statement. Um, so that's where we're at. We have been really successful in 2016, 2017. We had two Fulbright scholars, which put us among uh, the highest Fulbright producing institutions, master's comprehensive institutions in the United States. We also received this designation in 2012 as well. It's a point of pride uh, for some of us who work with the Fulbright program here on campus that we've been very successful. Uh, we've done a good job at JMU and I, really believe it's because of the high quality and high caliber faculty that we have there who are willing to be teacher scholars, who are willing to be cultural ambassadors, who are eager to promote mutual understanding, and then also who are eager to integrate what they learned into their courses, into their departments, into the curriculum when they get back here at James Madison University after their time on Fulbright. So for example, if we look at Shane O'Hare, um, Shane O'Hare is a former Fulbright scholar. He's a professor of dance. Uh, a couple years back, I think it was last year or the year before, I asked, um, how has Fulbright impacted your career to a bunch of different GMU Fulbrighters? And Lucy Bedner, who is in the School of Writing, Rhetoric, and Technical Communication, wrote this. I'll give you a moment to read that. So she says, I'll conclude simply by saying that nothing can match experience in another culture, not as a tourist, but as someone who temporarily becomes a part of the culture, learning about its people, food, language, and customs, not from a book, but through direct contact. Now, this is really important because I feel that um, it, she hits it on the head, this idea. She said, um, she also said, these experiences were, on, were among the most rewarding of my life. Um, this idea of direct contact culturally merging in the context of the other. This is what Mace Bentley wrote about his time in Thailand. Mace is a professor of uh, integrated science and technology at JMU. So he's bringing it back. He's motivating further exploration at JMU about climate science. This is Charles Bulliard, who is in the Department of Philosophy and Religion. He went to Cyprus, to Nicosia, Cyprus. So he connected with a lot of locals in the history of a place in a space that really accelerated his own scholarly interests. This is Anthony Tongan, College of Science and Math. He went to Mexico during the 2012-2013 academic year. And this is what he writes. It can impact you personally, and it can impact you professionally. Anthony, of course, uh, talks about his personal impact, and his children became fluent in Spanish, and then he worked at a, a, Christian, or a Christian orphanage in Mexico. When he came back, um, he and his partner fostered and then adopted three children. <laughs> uh, so what types of programs are there? As people talk about the Fulbright program, there's more than just one type. Typically, when people are talking about Fulbright, they're talking about the core, the core Fulbright Scholars Program. They are, that's, I got a Fulbright, I'm gonna go between four and nine months. That's what typically people are talking about. There's research Fulbrights, and you have to look up country-specific and search the Council on International Exchange of Scholars website if you do a basic search for Fulbright program, a website will come up and you can go down into that and look at the country that you want to go to in relationship to the core Fulbright program, and it will give you the type of awards that are being offered in that country per year. So there's research awards, teaching awards, and combination awards, research and teaching, and then sometimes there's distinguished chair awards, which is usually for senior scholar of sorts. Uh, all types of different applications, but that's country specific. 
The application deadline for all core Fulbright programs holds true. It's August 1st each year. That's important because you have to backward map and plan. How do I get my application together in order for, in order to be ready to submit before that August 1st deadline? That's the core Fulbright program. The Fulbright Specialist Program are short-term academic opportunities, usually between two to, to six weeks. It's in, in tip, and this changes from time to time, and typically it's two times in a five-year period. And those applications are on a rolling basis. I call these helping Fulbright Awards because typically you're going in, you're working in, you're working in uh, with a collaborative research project, or you're teaching um, teachers of science how. Uh, to better teach science, so pedagogical approaches, or you're working with uh, folks in a department or in a college or a university on um, course design or curriculum design or, or assessment or curriculum mapping. Um, there are a wide range of them, and again, they're, they're also a bit country-specific, so you'll have to read into the details on the Fulbright website. These deadlines are an ongoing basis, which means that you don't have to Submit August 1st, I think yeah, they do it quarterly or maybe three times a year where they um, go through and review the Fulbright Specialist Program applications. Again, look at, at the specifics by doing a search for a Fulbright program and you'll go to CIES's website, Council of International Education, uh, uh, International, Council of International uh, Exchange of Scholars and they'll give you more detailed information there. So other other um, other programs here occur: Fulbright program, Fulbright specialist program. Um, you have the Fulbright flex pro, uh, program. These are types of programs. There's multiple short-term stays in host countries over a period of one to two years. You focus on research, teaching, or research and teaching. The Fulbright International Education Administrators Program. This is for administrators or uh, those aspiring. Uh, these are country-specific. India and Taiwan at present. Uh, there are programs to these countries. These are short-term, typically you know, during the summer, the application deadlines are there. Russia, Japan and Korea, and France and Germany. And then visiting scholar Fulbright opportunities, that's scholars from other countries who come to, to the um, United States who are available to come to GM, available to come to GMU or whatever university you're from and stay on a short-term basis, usually it's two to four days, give lectures, interact with students, et cetera. And you can go and see what scholars are in country from other countries on the Fulbright website as well. And then you can uh, um, ask people at GMU or other universities to extend invitations to come uh, to really infuse the content curriculum, the department uh, with some ideas uh, from outside the United States. I wanna go back and talk about Fulbright planning. Most of these, particularly core Fulbright plans or the, core Bright, or the Fulbright specialist uh, program require significant planning. Here's a website that we have at the Center for Faculty Innovation. You can find this on our website under Fulbright information. Really in the details there, are, it, we suggest that you plan two to three years in advance of your intended departure date. Uh, the first thing you need to do is decide where you want to go, if there are Fulbright awards there, all that type of stuff, and then have a conversation with your unit and your dean and also past JMU Fulbrighters. We recommend that you explore um, Fulbright information sessions that are offered by Office of Access and Inclusion, Center for Global Engagement, and CFI, typically at the diversity conference in spring. We also suggest that you enlist coaching expertise. Uh, you can do uh, a search for Fulbright consultations and fill out a Fulbright consultation on the CFI website. And then of course, apply by the relevant deadline. So funding your Fulbright, I just wanna make this point that we do uh, through the provost office have a Fulbright enhancement award. We're able to co-support a few, not all every year, depending upon how many Fulbright awards we have at JMU. We're able to help out kind of defray unit level college and or department level costs related to your participation in the Fulbright program because of course, uh, life goes on at home and your classes need to be taught. So um, we give a little bit of assistance, financial assistance on a competitive application based um, way to your department to backfill teaching and service responsibilities. Um, but that varies, so you need to check in uh, with us about that. So, you know, you may know 
um, people. Uh, you, may, you, you may have talked to people um, who have been on the Fulbright program. And really, it's, it's, it's a different experience for every person you talk to. So I encourage you to reach out to some GMU faculty you may, have, uh, you may know on that list or reach out uh, to the Center for Faculty Innovation to set up a consultation to discuss uh, your Fulbright opportunities, your Fulbright prospects, and then the process itself. Uh, everybody's story is different, and that's a wonderful thing. In terms of, of planning ahead, logistics are really important. Selling it to your boss is really important. So when you have those conversations with your unit head and, and or dean, um, it's really important uh, that you uh, are intentional about why you want to go. How will this advance your career? How, how will this advance your teaching and your service and your research at JMU um, or perhaps beyond? So selling it to your boss is really important. Fulbrights are very prestigious. These are some points that you can use in that conversation. They bring revenue streams to campus, new international students exchange programs, grant, and also grant networking opportunities. Uh, Fulbright scholars participate in ongoing research activities. Fulbright grants are inclusive of all disciplines, all ranks, adjuncts, emeritus, and administrators. Fulbright grant scholars can be combined with other grants to internationalize existing research programs. And uh, returning Fulbright scholars typically internationalize their U.S. curriculum. So if you, these are points that you can bring up in that conversation of why you want to be uh, a Fulbright scholar. This is research that was done in 2005, a little bit dated, but I'm sure it holds uh, true to returning. This is research conducted on past Fulbright um, scholars, and it was an external source. Basically, the report out was at 83% published on the results from Fulbright. 94% seek additional grants. These are Fulbright scholars and funding. 72% of Fulbright scholars continue their collaboration with the host country. 85% encourage their students and colleagues to participate in exchange programs. And 91% share their knowledge of the host country with the broad, uh, with their local and the broad academic community. 75% uh, continue to collaborate with colleagues from other, other host country. 73% have incorporated aspects of the Fulbright experience into courses and teaching methods, and nearly 70% have initiated educational exchanges since completing their grads. I mean, that's incredible. So investing in Fulbright is really important because the returns are uh, long-lasting, and uh, they definitely go beyond the experience in and of itself. So if you think about one semester away or in – in the case of a ninth month, uh, nine month Fulbright, nine months away, the return on investment can be decades in terms of what you do when you come back to campus. So that's important that you think about that and also that um, people that you are working with to get um, solid recommendation letters um, also are aware of that as well. I won't go into too many details um, in this short screencast because there's a lot is really meant to be an overview but if you have comments, questions, and concerns, um, we can talk about your needs. And you can do that, again, by going to the CFI website and go to Fulbright Consultations and submit a request, and we'll match you with a past Fulbright scholar who you can have conversations with about your particular needs. So with that said, um, again, I'll have to reiterate uh, the subtitle, Fulbright Program is a risk worth taking. Um, it's wonderful, it changes lives, it changes your own life, changes your own um, orientation to your work, your future trajectory as well. Uh, it also can change the life of your family if you choose to bring your family with you, depending upon the program. Uh, there is uh, money and funds in the core program typically uh, for faculty to bring their um, partners and or children dependent. It changes lives, and it's all about mutual understanding. And indeed, it is a risk worth taking. You will be stretched, um, your buttons will be pushed, you will learn, you will grow, and ultimately, hopefully, emerge as a uh, well-informed global citizen and global practitioner. Thank you for your time. Again, follow up if you have more questions.